Sutra, having received the Buddha's compassionate rescue and profound instruction, Ananda's tears fell, and he folded his hands and said to the Buddha, I have heard these wonderful sounds of the Buddha and have realized that the wonderful bright mind is fundamentally perfect. It is the eternally dwelling mind ground. Commentary as the beginning of the Sutra relates, Ananda fell into the hands of people of an external path and was in grave danger since he was on the verge of destroying the precept substance. The Buddha instructed Manjushri Bodhisattva to use the Suragama Mantra to rescue Ananda and bring him back. And the Buddha then instructed him repeatedly, one doesn't know how many times. So the Sutra says, having received the Buddha's compassionate rescue and profound instruction, Ananda's tears fell, and he folded his hands and said to the Buddha, Ananda was so grateful to the Buddha that he didn't know what to do, so he wept. His tears kept falling as he spoke. I have heard this wonderful sounds of the Buddha and have realized that the wonderful bright mind is fundamentally perfect. It is the eternally dwelling mind ground. Having been instructed in subtle and wonderful doctrines as I have just been spoken, such a drama sounds as this, I understand now that the wonderful bright mind, the mind ground, is fundamentally perfect, perfect from the beginning and now. Understand that it is a pure nature and bright substance of the permanently dwelling true mind. Sutra But now in awakening to the drama sounds that the Buddha is speaking, it is my conditioned mind which I used to contemplate them reverently. Having just obtained the mind, I do not acknowledge that it is the fundamental mind ground. Commentary, but now in awakening to so the Dharma sounds that the Buddha is speaking, it is now my conditioned mind which I used to contemplate them reverently. Ananda says that in understanding the subtle, wonderful Dharma sounds and in respectfully looking upon the Buddha's countenance and contemplating the sound of his voice, he is still, he's still using his mind which says his unconditions. Having just obtained the mind, I do not dare acknowledge that it is the fundamental mind ground. Ananda says he has obtained it, but he doesn't dare acknowledge it. He doesn't dare recognize it and admit completely that it is his true mind. The Buddha explained to him, the mountains, the rivers, the great earth and everything is your true mind. They are all within your true mind. The Buddha explained that the seeing nature is just the permanently dwelling true mind of each one of us. Ananda understood the doctrine, but he still doesn't dare accept it and make it his true mind. He hasn't turned himself around immediately, so instead here he is asking questions again. Ananda always has something to say. Sutra, I pray that the Buddha will take pity on me and proclaim the perfect sound to pull out my doubts by the rules and enable me to return to the unsurpassed way. Commentary, why doesn't Ananda dare accept the doctrine? He says that when he listened to the Buddha speak drama, he was listening with his mind which says it upon conditions. He thinks that if there were no mind which says the upon conditions, no drama would be heard, would be heard. This is a mistake. Here is Ananda with yet another layer of delusion. He said, it's all right to reject my mind which says it's upon conditions, but if I put aside my mind which says it's upon conditions, what will I use to listen to drama? I won't have a mind. He still thinks that the mind which says it's upon conditions is his true mind. He doesn't know that your mind which says it's upon conditions which makes discriminations is the conscious mind which is subject to production and extinction. If you can put aside and listen to drama, then you will be generally listening to the drama. If you listen to the drama with the true mind, all dramas are true. 
if you listen to the drama with your mind, which says it's upon conditions, then no matter how much you listen, it always seems to be right and yet someone somehow not right. There's a continual doubt. You should receive the drama with a true mind. But Ananda doesn't know that, and so he doesn't dare accept what Shakyamuni Buddha said about the true mind. He was afraid that if he accepted the true mind, he would be able, wouldn't be able to listen to the drama, and listening to the drama was what was most important to him. He thought, it doesn't matter to me if it is the mind subject to production and extinction, or what kind of mind it is. What counts is whether I get to listen to the drama. It is this point that he is not understood and that causes him to have doubts.